Hey everyone, welcome back to the Microwave Lab. Today we're going to look at this gadget that I got. This is a 200 amp bridge rectifier, and we can see here it's MDQ 200A 1600 volt, and uh, brand is Lingshine. Uh, a little bit uh, off on the uh, printing of the sticker there, but this is kind of a generic part. Uh, I found them on Amazon with very good reviews, people putting them in welders and things like that, um, but it, with all different stickers that are slapped on there for different uh, companies. I picked this one up on eBay for just under $20, um, and uh, it's about, it's about three, 3 inches by 2 inches, maybe maybe 4 by 3, um, and uh, I, I bought this somewhat as just a gadget to play with and also um, because I'd really like to build my own power my own DC power supply eventually I think it would be a good tool for working with radios and all but um, anyway we're gonna do a little bit of testing I just wanted to show a really nice uh, sort of show the physical dimensions but a really nice heat sink on the bottom here and it is actually it's hard to tell but it's proud of the plastic surface so if you mount a heat sink gee if I can get that to focus that'd be great but um, Maybe, maybe not. Uh, uh, no, it's not going to work. Anyway, uh, it's proud of the plastic surface, so if you slap a heat sink on here, it's not going to be touching the plastic. It'll actually uh, rest against the, the aluminum. Um, it's about uh, maybe, maybe 3 sixteenths aluminum. Um, and it looks like the way this is constructed is these, these terminals, if I can take any of these screws loose enough. Oh, here we go. Um, hardware is pretty good. I think this is chrome plated hardware. It's not, it doesn't have any markings for English or uh, metric or SAE or metric uh, threads, but it looks like it's chrome plated hardware, which is pretty nice, or it could just be uh, zinc polish fooling me. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't really take, taken a look at it too much, but uh, it comes with the lock washer and the flat washer, and there's a captive nut under these flanges here. Um, you can just shake it, you can hear it a little a rattling a little bit, and these flanges are actually um, peened over or bent over, uh, you can kind of see they go into the housing, and I assume the way this was built was um, there are probably, on the aluminum heat sink, there are the four diodes, and they're probably like a TO220 package or something like that, and they're mounted to the aluminum, maybe spot welded or, or um, I guess you maybe you couldn't really spot weld aluminum, maybe, I'm not sure, but, uh, uh, or uh, attached on there somehow, and then um, these flange flange lugs are uh, they're sticking up vertically and then the housing is plopped down on top and then these are bent over and I, I tried bending all these flanges up and pulling the housing off but it doesn't work probably just because of the uh, the silicone or whatever's in there so uh, I don't uh, it feels like it's like the consistency of silicone but it doesn't exactly feel like it so I, I'm not entirely sure but anyway that's the sort of look at the housing and I assume this extra um, port in here is for, uh, you can see it's labeled with the same AC marking, so I assume that's the same package for a three-phase one, but it comes with a little uh, plug-looking thing for that. Uh, and so that's that's about it. What, we're gonna, what I'm going to do is um, we'll have a little fun with it. We'll uh, check out the output. Uh, we're going to use this big transformer here to step down the voltage a little bit. Maybe we'll, we'll, We can test it with full mains as well, but um, I'm skeptical of my ex actually Maybe I could use I could use the multimeter. I don't really want to put our, uh, mains into this and then send it into the oscilloscope, but uh, I guess I could then test the voltage first with a cheap multimeter, just in case something screwy happens. But uh, I don't want to put, like I said, I don't want to put too much voltage into the oscilloscope. Um, so mostly we'll just step it down with the uh, with the transformer and we'll uh, maybe uh, melt some resistors and uh, yeah, just get an idea of how it works. So I've got the rectifier all decked out with oscilloscope uh, leads to measure and from the transformer we've got about 17 volts RMS on the input and when we measure the output we can see that the rectifier isn't working properly if this uh, full bridge rectifier is working the way it should we should have um, on the output here is the lower waveform that's blue we should have um, we shouldn't have any flat spots in here there should be another hump of output and so it's uh it's not working properly uh i just went on ebay and requested a re refund from the seller i guess if i um uh, i could heavily capacitor the output to uh try to smooth it out a little bit but that's not not the best way to do it and it's uh 
the, really the way to go is with full bridge rectifier, which is what I wanted to do, but obviously not working properly. So I guess you get what you pay for with cheap electronics, but uh, you know, I at least I at least expected it to work. But I'm glad I I'm glad I checked it. You know, I was gonna start going full bore on uh, buying some um, power supply parts and, and screwing around with this, but. Uh, yeah, anyway, not working, so hopefully I'll get a refund on it, but anyway, I guess this video kind of flopped before it got going, but um, like I said, maybe I could uh, use some capacitors on the output, but that's uh, not the most efficient way to uh, to use the input power, so I guess that's all for this video, so thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, I guess it's uh, I guess it's hit or miss on these, uh, on these uh, full bridge rectifiers, so anyway, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. So today is a few days later. I didn't get to finish up the video the other day, but anyway, I've got the uh, rectifier all dolled up with the measurement equipment. Uh, I tossed on a capacitor. Make sure this is <laughs> okay. I'm questioning myself. Make sure the capacitor is facing the right way so it doesn't explode. Um, well, it hasn't yet, so I guess it's fine. But uh, got the oscilloscope probes on there. Uh, on the input, we've got a 14 volt RMS uh, voltage courtesy of my transformer and that's about 21 volts peak uh, maybe a little bit less than that and so we're measuring the measuring the output uh, and it's smoothed uh, and so we've got just under 20 volts RMS and the high of about or max uh, just over 20 volts so we're losing just under a volt right now due to uh, diode losses and all so no problem there um, yeah so that was the that was the first thing I wanted to show looks like it's it's working just fine. The um, if I remove the capacitor, the output, the waveform looks a little bit weird, and I think that's just because of the uh, the probes I'm using. Um, the oscilloscope with a one X probe doesn't have the resolution for a uh, for the uh, the size of the signal. But anyway, um, we're gonna. I wanted to uh, melt a few resistors just to test it out. These are twenty. Let's see what do I have here. Twenty four ohm resistors. Uh, so we're first gonna. First, going to measure the current through with the multimeter, and then we'll look. We'll do. We'll do it again, and we'll look at the uh, how the waveform uh, changes with load. So I've got the resistor connected through the meter, and I'm using some needle nose pliers to hold it because it, I know it's going to get really hot. So I'm just going to touch it to the uh, to the positive terminal on the left, and we'll watch the watch the current. And I did this a minute ago, and there was uh, some good some good fireworks going on. So uh, hopefully, I can get all that in frame with the uh, with the current as well. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, it's caught fire. Okay. <laughs> Can we get any more out of it? No, it's probably melted internally. Oh, that was pretty good. So I was pushing, uh, it was about 0.7 amps. Um, I tried with smaller resistors as well, and they were just, they just, in, just shorted internally. I'm not shorted, they opened internally so quickly that it wasn't really pulling any current. So, uh, well, actually, oh, I have some higher wattage 1 ohm resistors. I'm going to get one of those. All right, these are a little beefier. These are both uh, one ohm resistors, and I think they are. I think they're five watt rated. I can't really tell. It's uh, Vishay Dale RS5, so I assume that's five watts, one percent tolerance. Um, so we'll uh, we'll give these a go. Two of them in series, so we have twenty volts. It should be about ten amps, but uh, we'll uh, we'll see how it looks. Hopefully, I don't destroy this four dollar <laughs> multimeter. Contact. Oh. All right, so we're only pulling about f five amps. That must be because of the loading. Oh, it's melting. <laughs> we got some smoke. Five. Eh, yeah, it's still holding at five amps. Yeah, those resistors are uh, letting some smoke out. I'm gonna spare them. So they're nice resistors. So we're pushing about five amps there. That's probably because of loading. Um, probably because of the loading effect. So I, what I'm gonna do is put the oscilloscope back on. But then again. Okay, one, uh, if I'm at one meg ohm. I'm just thinking, doing some mental math here. If I, I don't want the uh, the load to skew the measurement values, but if we're measuring at one meg ohm, it shouldn't. Uh, measuring one meg ohm in the oscilloscope, it shouldn't. Uh, the load should make a difference. It's substantially smaller than that. So uh, yeah, so I'm gonna get that set up. We'll we'll get rid of the uh, the uh, meter and we'll go from there. So the scope's hooked back back up and right now the capacitor is disconnected and you can see the waveform which looks kind of funky but I think that's just because of my measurement I'm using uh, this 1x probe and uh, the scope doesn't have enough headroom to uh, to, rec to um, <laughs> rectify to to um, 
recognize the whole uh, waveform, so it's getting a little wonky. But uh, anyway, if we we'll put the put the cap back in, it was just jostled loose. And there's our oh, no, DC waveform. Okay, so now we're gonna go again with the resistors. And actually, I I did this. Uh, a second ago and the solder melted so that means these were getting pretty darn hot uh, so I had to resolder them and let them cool for a minute so I'm just gonna over here I'll connect them and uh, we'll see how the waveform looks uh, contact oh, oh. All right. uh, I'm trying to look at two things at once oh we lost our capacitor okay Come on. Just have it shoved in there. There we go. Okay. I hope one of these uh, resistors didn't. Oh, there we go. Okay, resistors are connected. You can see we're getting what looks like a real bridge rectifier output waveform. And that's because of the loading. So we lost about, we lost quite a few, we lost the, we're down to about 12 volts RMS. Peak is still up about 18, 19. Resistors are smoking pretty good. Okay, I'm going to take them off. So you see there, the load. Uh, if I was going to draw, you know, that much current from this, I would need a, I would need a better capacitor, or uh, ideally, I'd use some uh, some linear regulators or something like that. Because um, uh, ultimately, ultimately, I'd really like to build a big power supply, but um, that might not be too uh, cost effective. It's just a just a dream. But uh, anyway, it's good to see that this. Uh, Rectifier is working properly, even though for a cheapo, you know, I'd, it was putting out, uh, wasn't even breaking a sweat there. So that's that's pretty good. Bottom's not even remotely warm. You know, it is rated for 200 amps. So uh, anyway, that's all for now. I wanted to show that even uh, your cheap electronics still uh, still might work. So uh, you might be able to build this a little bit cheaper with some um, buying discrete uh, high-powered diodes and uh, putting to, putting to them together yourself. But uh, yeah, I, I didn't really look into that, but. This, uh, this looked good, so I bought it. Um, anyway, that's all for this video. I hope you learned something. I certainly did. So uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.